It's the Score North Twin Show. Got a random twin of the week for you guys today. We have a rally sausage update, an exclusive rally sausage update Break from our loose. Twins Beat podcaster, Declan. You know, Declan, this is his first year on the beat covering the Twins, and he's he's brought great nuggets, Royce Lewis-related information, Carlos Correa. But this upcoming rally sausage update might be his biggest exclusive. I don't <laughs> want to oversell it. Let's see. But, uh, Jeb, before we get to all these things... Padrigs or porrigs, as they say we get a in lot the of native flack. land. Yes, <laughs> exactly right. So, so I was told weeks ago by uh, by our guys there that Padrigs is just fine. So I'm going to continue to call them Padrigs because Padrigs, they, Minnesotans. They Padrigs. make beer that tastes oh, like geez. beer. In fact, in fact, let me say this: if you got a, you know what? If you start to chew on some sausage and, and you're like, oh my god, it's the rally sausage. This is old. Well, then you'll wash it down with the Padres because Padres is delicious. They make a red that's phenomenal. I'd they, spit it out first make, and then uh, maybe take on, a sip of Come porridge. on with me. Come on. Come on. This, Don't swallow come expired on this sausage. With me. Padres, uh, a combination here recreating Irish and UK classics as well as some innovative craft beers that they uh, that they have at their location in the old Lando Nod factory at the corner of Broadway and Central Avenue's Northeast. They've got music. They've got great fun there. We, we actually had a Score North party there, a Purple Daily party a few weeks ago. Uh, a, and their beer available in over 80 liquor stores in the Metro. Check them out on Facebook or Instagram or their website, padregs.com, the official beer of the sports dad. Yeah. So the Twins finally win a game last night. 10 runs off of a bad angels team. And they're they're I almost feel like we should do like daily state of the twins, 77 and 68. They're six games back of the Gardos, which at this point now they have overcome in 2009. They were like seven games back around this time. And they went like 16 and three and there's something crazy with Orlando Cabrera and Pavano and those guys. Right. So like it has happened before, but they also have to climb over the Royals um, I'm more concerned about the rearview mirror right now, which is the Detroit Tigers are still just three games back. They are now three games over 500 despite selling at the trade deadline. So what are the vibes like? You've been back there for a couple of days now, Dex. Like, what are the vibes like around this team at Target Field? I mean, geez, after speaking of Minnesota and oh, all, geez. Uh, oh, after, after yeah. last night, oh, my oh, oh, mercy. Know, it was just you know, a win there. Whoop, let me just sneak really past struggling. you there. Oh, geez. Um, before last night's win, it, it was, it was murky. It was meek. It, it was, it was not a fun place to be in. Even on Monday, on Monday, it was especially kind of just kind of dry and slow. And, and they obviously are frustrated and pissed off just like everyone else. And for yesterday, I think just to have the big win, a big exhale, um, was I think pretty positive. And I think it started with the return of the rally sausage. Wow. So... I'll, uh, I'll paint the picture of, of what happened here. Uh, so pregame yesterday, it's like 3 p.m., 3.30 or, no, it was more like 4, 4 o'clock p.m., and they're wrapping up batting practice. Guys are mostly done. Uh, myself and Dan Hayes and, and Doe from MLB.com, we're all waiting for Royce Lewis. We wanted to catch up with him after BP. And Kyle Farmer is signing some autographs for, like, you know, the kiddos that always sit in front of the dugout pregame and whatnot. And he comes down and he goes, see that box over there? I'm like, okay. And it, there's this box uh, behind all the bats where all the bats are for each player for, for the game. He's like, don't look in that box. I'm like, okay. Well, you told three reporters to not look in a box and everyone walked away. So we took a look in the box and there was the rally sausage. The rally sausage had <laughs> returned. And it was wrapped twice. It's like been wrapped up in in more protection, quote unquote protection. This, in is a it the same suit. sausage? Yes, for sure. That, that's yes. what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, it's nuclear at this point. Yeah, uh, it's this is like Raiders at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. I feel like, or you you open the box and like people's faces melt off from this thing. Royce had the day off, and even he was like, I mean, I don't want to touch that thing. But if it's going to help us out, I'm all for it. We haven't been able to get anything dropping in. We were not even getting errors to fall our way. Like, whatever. We'll, we'll try everything. But after three months 
The rally sausage returns. Kyle Farmer, of course, then hits a home run. Dude, he's on fire right now. He is actually on Three fire. Three home runs this month. He's on yeah. fire right now. I mean, like and one hell, coming into the... It, it, not, not even just this last week. Kyle Farmer, in his last 15 games, is has an OPS over 1,000. Oh, he's hitting oh, 320. In his last 30 games, he's slugging almost 600. So everyone that tried to kill the Kyle Farmer experience. Judge tried to kill ringer. Carlos yeah. Santana. Yeah, who now I've apologized. Kyle for. Farmer. I still agree with that one. K- who else can, Judd, kill off somebody else quick? Who, who's a pitcher? Kill off uh, Simeon Woods Richardson. Festa. Festa, yeah. Get rid of him. Judd, say it. I, it all goes back and forth. So, <laughs> well, so I, I did hear Farmer was on with Audra post game, mm-hmm. and, and she did ask about the rally sausage. And he was very like, he, she was like, where did it come back from? And, and, and he's like, I don't know. It just comes back when, when we, something along the lines of when we need it most, it just comes back. <laughs> yeah. So and like, then, th- it's a mysterious sausage. It's a mysterious sausage. And also like post game. And this is where like, I'm a little confused because farmer was obviously being a little playful pregame being like, Hey, don't look in that box. He, he, he. And then in post game, he's like, "Well, I'm not gonna be with my sources." And also, are you guys really gonna make this a thing? We're gonna make this a thing. You made it a thing. You oh. literally delivered a box to the clubhouse with the sausage and hit a home run. We hadn't made anything. Do we think you, you have literally made this thing resurrect from the dead? And now it's back, and you score ten runs for the first time. It's in a media a driven creation. It's a media driven thing. thing. But here's the real question. Where does it go? Like, I don't do, know. Does he take it home and stick it in his garage when it's he, not being used? Clearly, someone takes care of it. I'm going to assume it's Farmer because he won't reveal his sources. So he's That's the sausage the direct keeper. quote. He's the sausage keeper. Okay. Uh, and everyone else, of this course, is, so is very murky. coy and quiet about, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't know it was still here. Uh, someone is taking care of this sausage. I'm going to guess it's Chef Kyle Farmer. Man, I feel bad for Audra or really any, like, imagine your dream job being sports broadcasting and you fast forward and take a look at your future in the business and uh, it's you post game asking another baseball player about a rally sausage, you know? Yeah. Stuff. Even Dave Campbell yesterday in his in his question to Rock was like, hey, sausage aside, how big was that home run from Sausage aside. Sausage aside, Ooh, how big yeah, was that I home like run? I like the eggs and the sausage <laughs> but here's, on the side. Here's also something weird. So that there is a there is a like little bit of a bug going through the twins locker room right now yeah. and players. Uh, uh yeah, it's called Salmonella. It's called Castro had, had it. Castro uh, was throwing up before the game on Monday and had to be yeah. removed as a last second as a last second uh, a scratch. Carlos okay. Santana left with an illness. Griffin Jacks had an illness last week. And now we're bringing in a sausage. And for a guy like... And Rocco was very, like, pro-sausage comments yesterday. Rocco <laughs> is sausage. a germ freak. He did not I like know. the sausage. When when it initially came out, you could tell he was repulsed by it. Yeah, yeah. R- Rocco's a huge germ freak. And and it, it, that, that that's totally fine. If you want to be a germ... Like, if he doesn't feel well, we will literally either go outside to do availability or he'll make, like, Jace Tingler take the questions because he doesn't want to be around anyone if he doesn't... If he feels ill. Uh, but it's kind of interesting that there's a literal sickness kind of running through the Twins clubhouse and now we've we brought a sausage. Yeah. But if, if it leads to runs, and I don't care cares? if you're puking around the well, base paths. Do it. Wait, when... But... Blah. I, I watched the game on Bally's last night, and it did look like when it was tossed out to guys after home runs, it was really well wrapped up. Yes, it needs like, to be. I like mean, it's there very needs to be well a, wrapped a up. foot of something around that. Like thing it for looked me to like come. it looked like there there was a big like um, baggy on it now, so it's very well preserved as far as being mm-hmm. not touching human hands. Yeah. Correct. You know what? Just, have you guys ever seen? Uh, the movie, the Rick Moranis movie from like the late '80s, early '90s, Little Shop of Horrors. No, it's it's well, it's a musical, so Declan would hate yeah, this I mean, thing. Yeah. Rick Moranis, by the way, been completely out of the spotlight for like 30 years. He came back for a commercial during the Super Bowl, but so the the premise of the movie is uh, he it's a it's a plant shop in like um, some crappy part of like a big city where it's kind of run down. Yeah. And they're about to close up this plant shop. And oh, Rick yeah. Moranis is like the assistant. And he disco- he's he been like cultivating this new plant called the Audrey 2. 
yep. named after the gal that he's in love with named Audrey. And what he finds out is the plant doesn't grow off of water and food. It grows off of human blood. Yeah. And the rest of the movie is about as the plant gets bigger and bigger, no longer can you just like prick your finger and feed the plant. Like it gets bigger. Now you have to start feeding it like actual humans. So it's a little shop of horrors. This is how I envision the stretch run for the rally sausage. That it's like at some point you're going to have to sacrifice someone on the roster. <laughs> In order to in order to feed the rally sausage, if you want to make a run to the World Series, someone's going to have to be sacrificed to the rally sausage. Wow! Who is oh it going to be? You're, you're is it Kyle Farmer deep. himself? You're taking is this it, very deep. Is it Carlos Correa? Maybe it's Carlos Correa's right foot. I don't know. This show has taken a turn that even I didn't expect <laughs> when we if, were talking it, about a sausage. Is this? Is this going to lead to a run? Like, it, it, what if what if they go on a run like 2009 or something? They go on. I mean, they're going to literally have to. They've committed to this now. This is the thing. Yeah, we've fine. had smell them. We've had uh, the fishing jackets. But like, if they make a run, this is going to be a catalyst for the Twins in October. Yeah, there's a yeah, case is, to be made. Awesome. It never should have gone away once it started because yeah. they they were playing terrible. They started it. And then I think Baldelli and a, a few guys were like, this is repulsive. It's disgusting, right? So it yeah. stuck around. And then they started to play well. And they're like, okay, that's enough of that. I'm shocked they kept it. Um, but I, I would argue that the theme of the 2024 season for this team should have been the sausage is the thing. How the sausage is made inside the 2024 <laughs> Twins World <laughs> Series Championship. <laughs> hey, fans. <laughs> We're going to have to replace, well, I guess the Brewers oh. already do the sausage race. I was going to say replace yeah. all the Target mascots with uh, Coming that up idea next, was stolen 30 years ago. down, Audra and the sausage. <laughs> so, <stole>. um... <laughs> hey, it's the rally sausage. So, so rally sausage. It's uh, the rally sausage. <laughs> what was going through your mind when one. you were... <laughs> You're the one at the top of the show that, that said, is, is the sausage wrapped up? Anthony, when the sausage hits the hands and the hands catch the sausage, <laughs> we are off the you're going to have a good time. You are off, we are off oh, the rails. Man. Okay. Should we do a random twin of the week here? Yeah, uh, yeah just a, one more quick note. Yeah, you got uh, oh, sure. Notes about yeah, yeah, any, yeah for sure. It has for nothing sure. to do with sausage. Um, uh, Carlos Correa, Byron Buxton, they did take at-bats yesterday. So, yeah, the twins brought up these pitchers from Cedar Rapids as just bodies to throw live pitching to Correa, Buck, Kepler, Margot. Uh, both those guys did take at-bats yesterday. Um, we'll see in their progression of rehab again. I think Byron is Byron's just going to have to, and he, he mentioned this on Monday, he just has to accept that I'm not going to be 100% and I'll have to play through some type of pain. Correa, yes, in the same vein, but also he hasn't played baseball or really been ramped up with anything in almost two months. So we'll see when Correa's back, but I do expect Buck to probably be ahead of him when they do come back. And Kepler, Maxi, shut it down. It's okay. You've been replaced. Just shut it down. I mean, See but in Seattle def- or something next year. But, shut dude, def- defensively, the Twins are not a great fielding team. And I know Kepler, like, his bat is usually cold. And, Judd, you hate Kepler. And he's been a frustrating player. But, like, he's a really reliable Struggle. corner outfielder defensively. And if you're not going to be able to, if you don't have fully healthy Correa, if sure. Royce Lewis is struggling, what what other ways can you win well, games? Put your best defensive lineup out there, and, he, and Max Kepler would be part of that. So, I'm going to tell you though, Walner and Wright, I'm fine with because he's good enough, and he's got a freaking cannon, and his he's bat fast. makes up for deficiencies. Yeah, more and, than other. And players. you know what, Margot, you can shut it down too. I'm fine with that. Get me Correa and Buxton back. And have them not come out of games because I'm concerned about that. And you know what? You don't need to throw BP to Mar- Margot and Kepler. Just, just take it easy. Yeah, I'm. I want Kepler back as like a defensive guy, especially late in games. You want Margot, Margot back? just kind of. Pinch hit? I don't. Of course, he's. Of course, I oh, believe he is slayer. hitless. The lefty slayer. Yeah, but I don't. He can hit lefties. A but he he is he is zero for like twenty five. Pinch. Hitting this season, right, Declan? Or over twenty four, something like that. That's still the case. I think it's hard, man. Some some guys can't do it because yeah, so, okay. it is it's such a deviation 
And some guys need an at bat or two to get into the groove of a game. I mean, you're coming in. Can't DH too. Like there's there's not a thing across the board that guys' skills are transferable necessarily. You're right. Yeah. So all right, those are your those are your updates from the Twins clubhouse here as they try to put away a terrible Angels team with some big series coming up on the horizon. And you got the Tigers just three games back, technically four because of the tiebreaker. The Red Sox and the Mariners. Do you guys even want to make the playoffs? I don't know. I think the Twins are now four games clear of both those teams. So we'll keep an eye. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay, random twin of the week here. All time. I have 21 wins, Declan 18, Judd with 15. I'm scuffling right now, guys. Yeah, Judd hasn't had a win in about Perfect. two months here. Kenny Rogers was your last win. Yeah, it, I'm on a I'm on a roll, and it's not good. I snagged Otis Nixon last week. Before that, Declan was on a four-game heater. Nick Blackburn, Josh Willingham, Burp Lylevin, Sergio Romo. Yep. So Declan will throw out a series of clues. Judd and I get up to three incorrect guesses each as we compete against each other. If one of us hits a third strike, the other one wins automatically. No Googling, but you can control F search for names that we've done previously. Okay. All right. This random twin of the week had a 12 year MLB career. Over 1200 games, 1219 games. A career 251 hitter. Hmm. Hmm. This random twin of the week was a second round pick by the twins. Picked by the twins. Yep. Interesting. Corvo. Parisi. Scandella. This random twin of the week hit ninety six career home runs. Well, that's not very many. 251 hitter. 96 career home runs. This is just a meat and potatoes guy. So, like, this yeah, is he's just he's got like a, six, like a 650, 700 OPS. Slap that like baseball a... all around the park and see what you got. Yeah, I, I, this is a safe clue. He, he did a lot of little things right. A lot of the small ball things right. It's just the player I thought he was. For example, was once third and sacrifice flies in a season. On two different occasions, was top 10 and hit by pitches. Man, I'm going through a lot of names that weren't drafted. Top 10 in hit by pitches two different times, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Two different times. It's the grinder, man. And unlike Manuel Margot, this guy could pinch hit. Randy Bush. Oh, that's Randy, a great one. There you go. Ding, ding, yep. ding. Dang it. That might have been too much of a giveaway. Yeah. One of the greatest slides nice job, in dude. Twins history, that backdoor slide against the Cardinals, 887 World Series. Comes in the back door there, get, gets his hand out, touches the plate. Fantastic slide. Um, Randy Bush. Set an American League record with a pinch hit in seven consecutive games. I don't yes. know if that still stands, wow. but it happened yep. in 91. Yep. And, and uh, uh, tied a team mark in 89-ish with eight runs driven in in one game, I believe. Wow. Mark set in 77 by Glenn Adams against the White Sox. He twice, holy crap. He, in two different seasons, he had at least 13 pinch hits. Yeah, that was his thing. Damn. Yeah, slap that ball all uh, And one of all seven all. players to, to be... Uh, on both 87 and 91 Twins World Series teams. Yeah. Cubs Randy assistant GM, right? Bush. Cubs uh, assistant GM now, like 10 years ago. 
Yeah, he was assistant GM, and then he transitioned out of the front office role and is now a senior advisor in baseball operations. So, yes, he's... Oh, for the Cubs? Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. I know you're still with him. Uh -huh. He's had a long career advising the Cubbies. Yeah, Rant. so Judd, off the schneid, your 16th career victory. So I will dish out the clues for next week's random twin of the week. Yeah, Got to get another roll right. here. Baseball! Yeah, can you parlay it into back-to-back -back wins? So, yeah, uh, 21 wins, 18 for Deck, 16 for Judd. And uh, we'll keep an eye out for Immaculate Grid, too. But, yeah, Declan pumping out extra innings episodes here. He is our, our eyes and ears in the clubhouse on a regular basis. If you've missed any of the recent Tuesdays with Trevor Plouffe episodes, too, those things are just feel like fire every week. He's awesome. And uh, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button on the brand-new Scornor Twin Show YouTube channel, be sure to do that. We're pumping out near daily twins content here. So, all right, boys, let's get another one against the Halos, huh? Let's make it happen. Yeah, it shouldn't be that Bust hard. out that rally sausage. sausage Come on, guys. Through a halo. All right. Oh. 